And welcome to our community. Susie Thomas here with you. And Max Barton from the Canton Museum of Art joins us today. Good morning. Good morning, Susie. All right. Canton is known for a vibrant arts district. And uh, you can't ignore the fact that the jewel in the crown has gotten to be our Canton Museum of Art. It really is world class. Um, Tell us a little bit about the Canton Museum of Art for anyone who has not visited yet. For anyone that's not visited, you're, you're certainly missing out on a, on a, a wonderful museum and, as you say, a, a wonderful gem of the Canton and Stark County community and even the Northeast Ohio region uh, as, a, as a premier museum for an exceptional visual arts experience, as we like to say. But uh, our focus is American works of art and exhibitions that tell a story, uh, be they of our cultural heritage, of our history, uh, of our state, uh, anything that's in that, that, that is a, uh, a story in American artworks that folks can come in and be entertained by, learn a little bit, um, maybe engage in some educational programming, some artists and conversations from one of our speaker series, things like that. You're, you're, you will not find a Van Gogh show at, at the Canton Museum of Art. Uh, that's, that's, I, I leave that to the Cleveland Museum of Art and, and others that might want to focus on that. Our focus is more the American school and mm. the works of art from all across our country. Mm-hmm. Um, let's get to know you a little bit. Um, you are still kind of the new executive director. Has it been a year? It has, it's, it's, it'll be a year on September 24th. All right. Well, happy anniversary, almost. Almost. And uh, we also want to, well, wait a minute. Happy anniversary yesterday. Yeah. On, Indeed, September, on 24th. September 24th. You're right. Happy anniversary to you. And happy birthday, too. Okay, and I gotta, happy I gotta birthday. i got to throw that out there. Yes. The same thing. Yes. yes. And uh, also, I mean, folks were familiar with uh, MJ Albacetti, Al Albacetti. Absolutely. And you were his uh, heir to that position. So what brought you to Canton, first of all? What brought you to the Canton Museum of Art? Well, I can't, you know, I... I, I we say air. I, I came in. I joined the museum in, in 2012 as the marketing director, mm-hmm. uh, and I, I had some ideas uh, when I came on board that uh, I, perhaps if if MJ Alba said he was retiring, as he said, when I originally talked to him, he, he said, "Why don't you apply for my job? Because you're <laughs> overqualified for marketing." And I said, "Well, why don't I come in the museum and, and see if uh, if it's indeed where I want to be?" Uh, that was 2012. I, I I came to the Akron area back in 1991. Uh, from my home in Louisville, Kentucky. Mm -hmm. And I came here for the University of Akron, actually. They have a master's degree in arts administration, which at that time was was one of the tops in the whole country. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, I was able to look at that degree and say, well, I want to do some marketing. I want to do some finance with that. to really combine the business of the arts into my career. Because I had started in in the performing arts at um, the Kentucky Center for the Arts in Louisville. And working with the Kennedy Center and others on education programming. Nice. So coming here, I wanted to go back, but, but the best laid plans. You get your degree, uh, you decide that you wanna you wanna head back to where you were, and I met my wife. There you go. And there, therefore, <laughs> I was given a choice. Well, you can go, or <laughs> so. Uh, so no, we 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 stayed here uh, in the Akron Canton area, and I I worked in corporate America uh, as a director of investor relations and communications for almost uh, 18 years. Then I decided I wanted to return to my beloved nonprofit arts. Yeah. And so I, looking around, I, when I began looking at, at around uh, in the museum world, I found the wonderful Canton Museum of Art and saw that it had an upcoming exhibition of the St. John's Bible. There you go. Which was the a a a a, uh, a chance to to market and work with the 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 world's first handwritten Bible in more than five hundred years. Right. And. That's how I happened to meet you because right. I was talking to you about the project and, and it was it was an awesome awesome deal that, that that we were having in and I thought this is going to be tremendous and so I stepped back into the arts uh, I loved it and, and and when MJ decided that he was going to retire uh, the museum did a search and they decided well you know what based on on that uh, and and you being there and, and knowing the operations and knowing how you want to take things you you look like the right guy for the job the so perfect person I'm still right here. here under our roof there right, you I'm go. still I'm still here and don't you find nothing is ever wasted because all those years in corporate America and fundraising and so forth doesn't that come in handy now with what it, you're it's, doing yeah well, it certainly does everything and, and I, I like to say uh, every time I talk to some folks in fact I was in front of some donors the other day and I, I said I, I used to have thousands of shareholders as a public company uh, and and somebody remarked to me about a year ago hey aren't, aren't you glad you don't have to deal with shareholders anymore and i said no i do i have new shareholders That's i have right. donors i have members i have patrons and honestly I, I i tell everyone each and every one that comes into our museum or that donates a dollar 
doesn't matter what you donate. You are my shareholder. I am the steward of your money, and I'm accountable for that. And, and I take that very seriously. It's, it, it's something that everyone, in, in, especially in nonprofit, should take. And I know almost all that I know do. So it's, a, it, it's a, uh, very good to come out of corporate to have an expertise in dealing with the public and dealing in marketing and dealing with operations. Operations is a really big deal. In, in, in nonprofit, you must be aware of costs. And so operations excellence is, is one of those things I've brought to the museum. So. And, and you love what you do. For, for one thing, you do have some pieces that are there permanently. And yes. some folks, I mean, I know you bring in some amazing exhibits, but there's also a very exciting permanent exhibit. Can you talk about that, the permanent yeah, the, collection? Yeah, uh, the... That is something that I, th I think is incredible for the Canton Museum and for, for Canton to realize. I know when I give talks uh, to Leadership Stark County, Y Stark, others who bring their, their new classes through, it's it's always amazing. They're, they don't believe that the museum has a permanent collection, uh, which is worth $25 million. There's $25 million worth of art inside the museum at all times. It's about 1,300 objects. Only about 5% or less are on display at any given time. And you keep There's rotating? not is enough that room. Uh, usually every year th we have three, four, four featured exhibitions. Mm -hmm. We create a, an exhibition in the permanent collection galleries that is thematically structured to the featured exhibition. So there's a, a wonderful array of works and beautiful, beautiful pieces from the likes of A Favorite Ohio Son, like Clyde Singer mm -hmm. uh, and his street scenes piece. Uh, and... Um, some beautiful ceramics from Toshiku Takiezu, uh, Jack Earl, uh, Alice Shilley, who's a favorite watercolorist from in Columbus. We are, are the focus of the collection, and some people don't know this, is that museums actually have collection uh, focus points. Ours happens to be watercolors, contemporary, mm. uh, ours is the 19th and 20th century and 21st century watercolors, and contemporary ceramics from the 1950s forward. So that distinguishes us from other museums in that we're not going to take the Picasso or we're not going to, to, to you know, take anything that's not an American work of art uh, and showcase it because mm -hmm. that's our mission, uh, both a, as, as presenting exhibitions and in education. It's amazing that we have it right here in Canton, Ohio. Um, it is. I, you mentioned the St. John's Bible. That, that tour where they take original pages of the first hand calligraphied Bible in 500 years, you can't just be a place that wants to show it. You have to have certain credentials and, and certain things in place as far as the type of museum you have. Um, and I understand Kent Museum of Art, met with them from St. John's University and passed with flying colors and ended up throwing one of the biggest uh, exhibits of the tour. Can you touch on that a little bit? Absolutely, absolutely. That was the, so that was a tremendous gift for, for anybody that was associated with it, and obviously uh, you were. It's, uh, it, it is a, uh, um, uh, a magical experience to go through uh, hosting the St. John's Bible because you're getting these monumental Bible pages that are, are, are four foot by almost six foot once they're they're opened up hand calligraphy uh all all um lambskin materials i'm sh sorry calfskin materials uh and it's 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 an amazing thing when you open them up in the galleries and you get these hints of gold and and the the the, the hand artistry that's done on each page and we were the first museum in the country to host the completed sections, of which there are seven volumes, uh, toast completed sections from all volumes of the Bible. That's amazing. Uh, we had, I, I believe it was 42 pages, and it was a period of, I think, about two years of going through getting getting certified or getting approved mm -hmm. to have that work in there. And that takes a lot from climate control to your operations to everything. The and lighting. you look at everything. You're not going to take a priceless work of art right. and put it <laughs> just anywhere. <laughs> right. So it's uh, it, it, it took a great deal. And let me see, the turnout for that was amazing. Visitors in that were almost, uh, it was above about, about 14,000, I think. Uh, and they came from all over the world. Uh, from Italy, Australia, we had visitors from. So that's amazing to be able to bring into the city of Canton, into Stark County, and then be able to showcase some of the other wonderful arts mm -hmm. organizations and other, other businesses that we have downtown that folks were just really amazed by. So that, that venture, that exhibition, brought a lot of attention to the museum, mm -hmm. brought a lot of attention uh, to us in, in regions outside of what we normally serve. Uh, Cleveland was instrumental in bringing a lot of people down here to see that. Uh, and then people scratching their heads wondering, well, why isn't this closer to us? Well, 
St. John's could only select a few places to go, so they selected Canton, and we were really happy about it. (laughs) That's right. And have to point out that that incredible turnout was in the midst of one of the worst blizzards and worst winters in northeast Ohio history. So amazing. The people were still braving the weather because they wanted to see the St. John's Bible. That was something. And it was great collaboration because I know we had lectures coming from Malone University. Mm -hmm. Uh, We had just wonderful programs and Every other week, things were hosted and people turned out because they wanted to get more of the experience of that exhibition, not just being in the galleries around it, but more of what was behind it. How is it interpreted? Uh, and sometimes theologically, other times, how is it artistically interpreted? Right. Uh, inside the galleries is not about giving you a theology lesson. It was about giving you an artistic lesson because mm-hmm. this was an artistic venture. And it was pretty amazing to see people from uh, the Society of calligraphic artists come out, uh, people from all over that had done hand illuminations uh, that were just amazing artisans that came to see an achievement that came from 23 different artists from around the country and around the world. Uh, And now it is in storage. Uh, Hopefully it will come back out on tour at some point. I don't know if it will. The last word I I heard from them was uh, that it was going to be bound. All of its uh, 1,200 1,200 plus pages bound and used at, uh, um, um, and I'm going to screw it up, St. John's, John's University. St. John's University, mm-hmm. John's University. Mm-hmm. bound yeah. and used at St. John's University, so you can cut that back in. <laughs> but there that, yes. that is, uh, that's what I understand too, that it's done touring, so if you want to see it, you need to fly out to Collegeville, Minnesota. Collegeville, Minnesota, and you can actually make appointments to see it. They have the yes. actual pages on rotation display out there, mm-hmm. uh, so it is a nice, uh, 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 it's a nice getaway. Uh, I've been out there to see it, and, and mm-hmm. it's uh, it's a, a beautiful trip, and it's an experience that you really will never forget, even yeah, if you true. get to see a few pages. Yeah, well, good on you, Canton Museum of Art, for bringing the real thing, the real McCoy. I will point out, if you want to see, if you're curious in seeing one of the Heritage Editions, which is an authentic reproduction and incredibly done and also a fabulous work of art, Malone University is the permanent home of the St. John's Bible. So you can stop in at the library over at Malone University here in Canton, Ohio, and ask to see uh, whatever pages they are showing of the St. John's Bible on that particular day. My understanding, they were going to have several pages out on display at any given time, I, mm-hmm. I don't know, but I, I know they got a full set of uh, of yep. all volumes, and it it is a, it's true. even to see the reproduction, a heritage reproduction is is an amazing it is event. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah, it's something else. Um, you've got uh, that's the past. Let's look ahead to the future. Um, in the like the next minute or so, uh, tease us a bit on some of the things that are coming up. Uh, uh, right now in the galleries, uh, to, we are we are blessed. One of the things that, that we do, uh, if they're out there, and they're not always out there, is to be able to find a touring exhibition, something that really speaks to American artwork, like I was talking about before. And right now in the galleries is a wonderful exhibition of decorative arts, uh, mm-hmm. meaning ceramics, furniture, uh, jewelry, things like that. This is called Beyond Craft. It comes to us from the Museum of Fine Arts in Houston. And it is a joy to be able to bring this to the community because Canton and uh, the whole Northeast Ohio region and indeed all of Ohio is rich in the heritage of the decorative arts and especially ceramics, which is where this show is grounded. And looking at the Cleveland School of of Artists and Rocky River where, where a lot of pottery comes out of and there's a lot of heritage there, this is an amazing show to come experience. And We are going to find out more about this, more about Beyond Craft, and a lot more with uh, Max Barton. And um, you are listening to our community. Stay with us.